According yeah. to the cloud, thank you for the reminder. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to the show. <laughs> this is episode 35 of the Georgie and Patty show. And I'm Georgie. That's your cue. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm Patty. <laughs> You never know that we changed up roles today and I'm supposed yeah. to introduce us <laughs> and um, look at me. <laughs> Doing amazing. <laughs> so uh, well, welcome to the show. Uh, this is Tuesday, so that means it's time for We Read It so that you don't have to. And uh, our our quote of the day, Georgie and I were having this this chat before we, we uh, uh, started the call and we're talking about um, the value of getting outside advice of uh, getting kind of this um, mastermind help for your business and how a lot of times um, masterminds aren't all that helpful because the people that are in the masterminds are, are don't um, don't have experience going where you want to go and this is actually one of the most awesome things about books and because in a book you're getting the experience and the advice from somebody who uh, has experience and advice to share. And one of the things that you can do uh, when you read books and uh, when you uh, start learning uh, from books in a way to like implement the learning a little bit more is to ask yourself in a certain situation, it's like, what would that author advise me to do? It, you know, it's like we were talking about, oh, who would we like to have on our imaginary mastermind kind of thing? And it's like, you know, what would Seth Godin have to say about this situation? What what would um, Stephen Covey have to say about it? What would Barbara Sher have to say about it? And to kind of put yourself into their shoes for a moment and think from their perspective to see if you can get some, uh, shed some light on the, on the subject. And... Uh, so I offer up that little nugget and I offer up our quote, quote of the day, which is from C.S. Lewis. And it is, the next best thing to being wise oneself is to live in a circle of those who are. Mm. And with that, my partner is going to share some wisdom this morning uh, from Robin Sharma. And I'm excited about this <laughs> because as I was telling Georgie, admitting, <laughs> me be, admitting, it's like, I've heard, I've heard this guy's name I haven't read any of his books. I don't know what he's about. Uh, so I'm as excited to hear what Georgie has to say as you are. <laughs> so uh, take it away, Georgie. Okay. Yeah, so I'm super excited about, about this one. Um, let me share my screen before I get all organized. Um, okay, there we go. It's interesting, you know, because this book, so The Monk Who Sold is Ferrari, I probably read this book, oh, it's easily been 20, over 20 years ago um, that I read it. And I think much like your Seven Habits, it was probably one of the first personal developy type of books that I had read. Um, I loved it because it was like a story, like a, like a fable. So it's a super easy read. But as I was kind of going back through the book and like, oh, what do I want to share about it? What are his main points? Those kinds of things. I was like, wow, I kind of forgotten or maybe we didn't even recognize really the impact this book has had on kind of my life and how I show up and the work that I do. And I'm like, oh, wow, I still do that. And I do that. Oh, wow. That's really a key point of what I do in my work and I hadn't really realized it before so it was almost a little bit emotional as I'm going through it and recognizing that this Robin Sharma dude has been such like which we were talking about this morning woven so much through kind of this whole journey I've been on for the last 20s plus odd years whatever it it is. It was really, really interesting. Of course, then I thought there's no crying in marketing. So the emotional piece lasted very little. It was short, short lived. <laughs> so I made my slides and I have a lot of notes because there's just so much I could talk about with this. So we'll, uh, we'll see where we end up. So this is our obviously reread it. So you don't have to. Woohoo. Um, I kept the same permission slip because, you know, you can read the book or not, totally up to you. Um, yeah, 
all is good. So this is the monk who sold his Ferrari. I decided to pull the original. There's been a few reprints of it. Um, this is the original cover, the one that I actually read. So this is from Robin Sharma. Um, so when you're inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all of your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations, your consciousness expands in every direction, and you find yourself in a new great and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties, and talents become alive, and you discover yourself to be a greater person than you ever dreamed yourself to be. And when I think about the work I like to do and the belief in human potential, I'm like, oh, look, he's kind of saying the same thing. It's kind of cool. And so this book is really based on um, a fable that he, that he heard from some monks up in the high Himalayan mountains. And here we have the Himalayas coming in as well <laughs> into, into this story. So I'm going to share the fable with you. And as we do that, I encourage you to kind of um, close your eyes. I'll tell you the story because the whole book is based on seven components in, in this little fable. So I wanted to give you kind of an experience of that. So just kind of close your eyes and listen to me. Um, so you're sitting in the middle of a magnificent lush green garden. This garden is filled with the most spectacular flowers you've ever seen. The environment is supremely tranquil and silent. Savor that sensual delight of this garden and feel as if you have all the time in the world to enjoy this natural oasis. And as you look around, you see that in the center of this magical garden stands a towering red lighthouse, six stories high. Suddenly, the silence of the garden is disturbed by a loud creaking as the door at the base of the lighthouse opens. Out stumbles a nine-foot-tall, 900-pound Japanese sumo wrestler who casually wanders into the center of the garden. Now here's the other thing. This sumo wrestler is almost totally naked, except he has a pink wire cable covering his private parts. Now, as the sumo wrestler starts to move around the garden, he finds a shiny gold stopwatch which someone had left behind many years earlier. He slips it on and falls to the ground with an enormous thud. The sumo wrestler is rendered unconscious and lies there, silent and still. And just when you think he has taken his last breath, the wrestler awakens, perhaps stirred by the fragrance of some fresh yellow roses blooming nearby. Energized, the wrestler jumps swiftly to his feet and intuitively looks to his left. He's startled by what he sees. Through the bushes at the very edge of the garden, he observes a long winding path covered by millions of sparkling diamonds. Something seems to instruct the wrestler to take the path. And to his credit, he does. This path leads him down the road of everlasting joy and eternal bliss. So basically, this whole book is built around this story. And it's this story where there's seven key pieces of it that will help you to lead to more self-leadership, more personal responsibility, as well as spiritual enlightenment. And when I was first looking at it, I was like, I agree with self-leadership. I agree with personal responsibility. Spiritual enlightenment? I'm not so sure. And then as I was thinking about it, actually even more this morning, I think if we look at it as enlightenment is actually coming back to ourselves and really remembering who we are at our core, the amazing, you know, human being that we are, possibly that could be a way to enlightenment. So maybe if we spend a little more time working on ourselves, that, that this little book could, could actually lead there. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give them that one for the, for this, this review for today. <laughs> so the first thing that he talks about in the, in the little parable is the garden. And so the garden is actually a representation of your mind. And when we think about our mind, it's really important to cultivate it um, in a way as if we were nurturing this beautiful little garden. So picking out all the weeds, making sure we're putting only good things in so the beautiful plants and flowers can grow. Because really, if we can learn to manage our mind, we can learn to manage our life. You know, because 
and I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of this stuff before, and it's just going to be a nice little reminder. But, but we really do create our reality based on the meaning we make of things coming in. And a lot of this is determined by the quality of our thoughts. Like, how are, how are we looking at things? What kind of perspective do I have? Am I seeing the glasses half full or half empty? Are the thoughts running around in my mind, are they always, am I complaining or is it positive? Am I constantly talking to myself about how crappy I'm doing with things or am I focusing on the good things that I do? But really what is the level of thoughts that are running on inside my own brain? The thing I actually have the choice of, do I wanna think this or not think this? What kind of self-talk do I have going on in there? because we really do have the capacity to choose how we want to respond to this life. And it's often not always easy. And I think it comes down to really being able to, you know, experience life. So experience all the different emotions that come through. We experience pain, we experience pleasure. And the trick is to not judge those things as either good or bad or positive or negative but just that it just is. This is just the experience that I'm having right now. And then what are the lessons that I can learn from this? What are the kind of the golden nuggets I can pull out of all of these experiences of my life? And I 100% know it's not always easy. And sometimes we get these ones where we're like, the last thing I wanna hear is what's the lesson when I'd rather just kind of punch the person in the face that says that to me, but, <laughs> um, but it's getting to that space of recognizing even when it's hard, you know, I'm having this experience and I know if I'm willing, there will be something in here for me to learn. And then when I come out the other side of it, um, I have the opportunity to expand and to grow. But it really is focusing on what's going on inside my own brain. That one thing that I really can control and focusing my attention there and being really, really aware of it. And I think this comes down to even when we talk about like building a business that works for you, it's learning to run your own race. What are the things that matter to me? What's the information I can take that's going to work for me and not being so concerned with what's going on outside of me, but first to get really, really clear on how well am I doing, you know, cultivating my own brain and really becoming a master of myself which is a lifelong process, I think. But the better we become at that, I think the more, um, the happier we're gonna be and the more fulfilling our life will be. So really looking at kind of the garden of your mind and, and what are you growing in there? What are you choosing to put in? And is it fostering that growth or is it just creating a really nasty, toxic weed fest? Uh, sorry, I got my, my face is in the way. <laughs> um, so, and then, so I put sort of little quotes from the book in here too. So there's nothing noble about being superior to some other person. True nobility lies in being superior to your former self. And I think this, you know, we often get stuck in that role of wanting to compare to other people and we're looking to sort of feed our own ego with how good we can be, you know, and one upping people and this comes with, I think, the success often that we, we search for too when we're so concerned with kind of keeping up with the Joneses or having the better house, the better car, the better whatever, the better children, my kids are dressed better than your kids, all that kind of stuff. When really it comes back to just looking in at myself, am I better today than I was yesterday? Are my thoughts a little cleaner today than they were yesterday? Am I taking more action today for me towards the things that matter and the things that I want? But really measuring, not against other people, but against just ourself and where we want to go. I think it makes life a lot easier. Number two is that red lighthouse that was in the middle of the garden. And that lighthouse represents your purpose. Surprise, surprise. Imagine my reminder of follow your purpose. Really? Um, so again, this really comes down to knowing 
where you are and knowing where you want to go. What is that thing in your life that's bigger than you that you are willing to devote your life to? And for us, I think many of us have found that, you know, we're doing our life's work. And by realizing what that work is, and we're so committed to it and so passionate about it, that we're able to kind of step into enjoying the process. It's the thing that we do every day. It does become like the lighthouse. It's like, here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going. I see it standing up there above everything else. When I get lost, I can look for that lighthouse and go, okay, that's right. That's my direction. Let me get back on my path. Let me figure out where I'm going. Because I, I really, really do believe that when we know our purpose and we're in alignment with it and we're following it, it does bring a lot of joy and fulfillment to our life. And part of that is really setting those goals, I think, in all areas of our life to be able to bring this to fruition. So whether it's in our work, our personal life, our health, our finances, our relationships, what are those goals that you want for your life and what does that look like? And then am I taking daily action to help myself get there? Which again, comes back to just, just measuring me, keeping all the focus on me and what I'm doing and the things that matter in my life and opening up that same bit of respect for an acceptance for other people. The third dude, if you will remember, is this big 900 pound, 900 feet tall sumo wrestler that came thundering out of the lighthouse. And this is a, to practice Kaizen, which is always um, working on your own self-improvement and self-growth, to keep moving forward, to keep learning, to keep working on that continuous self-improvement. I think he's so big, so we can remember that it's just like a thud right there, right? And it's also about, I love what he mentions in the book, actually, about, we often talk about, is my cup half full or half empty and he's like maybe the cup should be completely empty because if the cup is completely empty then we're open to new learning we're open to new possibilities we're open to being curious if the cup is totally full there's no room for anything else to come in and i think often we show up in life with our cups super full because, oh, I know everything, I know how to do this, take my advice, take my opinions, and I'm not open to allowing anything to come in where I might actually learn something, I might have some new growth, I might find a better way to do something or a new way to support my life and where I want to go. So it's really about being that continuous self-improvement, being open, being curious, asking questions, you know, and then also being really, really courageous to do what works for you. Being courageous to, you know, stand up for what you believe in, to draw, put your kind of stick in the sand and be like, yeah, this is me. This is what I believe. And this is where I'm going. And I thought this was really relevant to what we talk about now with this particular time where we can step up as leaders. And that requires a bit of courage, a bit of like, okay, this, this is what I believe. And being open enough to change our minds if we get a new piece of information that might, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. Oh, this could make that easier. Instead of having the cup so full with the lid on that nothing's getting in that thing, you know? So, and then being able to, when we're in that space, is to assess what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? Because I think when we know those things, some of those weaknesses we might choose to want to work on. But if we never self-assess, if we're never looking at where we are really going internal, how do we know those things? We, we just, we don't. And it's also being really clear about um, bringing all the pieces together. It's our mind, it's our bodies, it's our souls. It's the whole system of our life, not just one piece of it. You know, we tend to focus maybe so much on our business and our career, but what are all the other pieces that can fit into that? And am, and am I spending as much time there? You know, am I really focused on what I want for my health? Do I have even a plan for that? Maybe, maybe not, you know, my spiritual growth, my family, my kids, but really, really this whole book is about um, going from the inside out and really, really mastering um, yourself. So with his practice of um, 
constant self-improvement. He has sort of these 10 rituals for radiant living. So I thought I would share those with you as well. So one is the ritual of solitude. So finding that space every day where you can just have silence, where you can be quiet, where you can reflect, where there's nothing else coming in, a space that really makes you feel good. So I think cultivating that space, I think I might turn my daughter's room into a solitude space as opposed to fight club. It's gonna be my Zen garden. Um, or being outside, right? Time in nature for me allows me that space of really being quiet. You know, not listening to music or podcasts or anything like that, but it's that way to just really connect in being quiet. And then the ritual physicality. So this is about moving your body every day. Even yesterday, we talked about that six minute walk, but doing something to just get your blood flowing and moving in a way that works for you. I think all of these have to be done in a way that works for you. Live nourishment. So this is where he's talking about eating like basically live food, whole foods, fruits and vegetables. Nourish your body on things that are going to support it as opposed to things that would make it a little more toxic and unhealthy being because it's a system. We're a system. So what am I putting in to help me get the results out that I want? Abundant knowledge. This comes to reading books. Just like Patty was saying this morning about, you know, we can really have these sort of masterminds and mentors that come in the forms of books. What would these authors do? And as opposed to just reading a book, but actually study a book, really learn from the book. How could I um, apply these different messages and techniques to my life? Which ones would help me? Which ones won't? But really taking the time to absorb that and, be, and get knowledgeable about it instead of just a, you know, a quick read. Personal reflection, we talk about this a lot. We, our weekly review, right? Taking time to look at what did my week look like? What did my day look like? Am I spending time really paying attention to what did I think all day today? Like if I sat down at the end of my day and went through, what did my day look like? Was my day mostly calm? Was I mostly positive? Or was there a lot of stress? Was I having a lot of negative thoughts? What was going on inside of me today? And does it work for me? How do I want to take that moving forward? But if we never take the time to sit down and reflect on that, how do we ever really know? And often, Patty and I were talking about this this morning too, we might notice only the bad parts and we don't take time to notice the good days we had or the good moments because we're so focused on the things that didn't work. And if we look at our garden, Focusing on those things that do work are really, really important because if all we're focusing on are the things that don't, those weeds are going to grow pretty quickly. Early awakening. This is the one I say only if it works for you. I don't think you have to get up every day at five o'clock. And I think really your early awakening may be at 11 if you're a night owl. You know, so I think again, it's, it's important to pay attention to what what works for you. For me, this one works, but if it doesn't for you, don't do it. Um, music, which I hadn't thought too much about this really, but I was like, oh yeah, you know when you hear a good song come on or a song that brings up good memories, you actually feel good. Like it really shifts your mood. So if you're having times where you're feeling a bit stuck or something, you know, what are maybe some songs you can play? Maybe it's a piece of classical music that you just really puts you in a good space to be able to think and reflect. Um, but something that can kind of bring in all of your senses, which I think music's really, really great for that. And often we forget about it if we get too busy. Spoken word, so affirmation, mantras, things like that. And you can say them out loud, you can say them to yourself, you can write them. But I think having these repetitive sayings that we can use over and over and over again, it does start to build these new grooves in your brain and to can cultivate the garden, right? More ways to just cultivate our garden. Congruent character. This is one of my favorites because for me, this means living in alignment with your values. Do you know what your values are and are you living every day in alignment with them? This is why I also believe having values turned into verbs because it gives us the filter. And if we, if that's all we did at the end of the day, we looked back and like, did I live my life in accordance with this? How did I do it? How did I know? 
Where would I struggle? Where could I do better tomorrow? Completely different life you would have. And then simplicity. Make life simple. We love simple and easy. You know, eliminating the stuff you don't need. Um, how can you make your life a little bit easier? I think often we think that there's so many things that we have to do. I have to answer the phone when it rings. I have to check my email 20,000 times a day. I have to respond to that Facebook notification as soon as it comes in. Really? Because maybe you don't. Maybe you can actually simplify things to, you know, what would really matter? Oh, I want to make a nice dinner and have dinner with my family tonight. I can do that easy instead of going out four nights a week, which you can't do right now, but maybe before this all happened, you may have noticed that with this COVID retreat, as I'm stealing that from the person who said it yesterday, um, maybe your life has become a little bit more simpler. Maybe it's slowing down a little bit. And so what are some of these things that you might take as permanent things you might want to use moving forward? Just some, some interesting thoughts there. And then the fourth thing, this is that pink wire cable thing that's covering our wrestlers' private parts. And what this cable represents is it's about discipline and how when we have like if you ever look at a cable it's actually a whole bunch of tiny little wires all wrapped together so when we start to build little things on little things on little things we can make a whole piece that's actually really strong but it happens from the layering of a piece on a piece on a piece on a piece and discipline quite often works like that too it's built by doing things consistently like little acts that we can do every single day to start to build on that. And before we know it, we're like, oh, look at me. I'm doing this thing like every single day. Because really when we have discipline, and it sounds sort of counterintuitive, but it actually brings us a lot of freedom because we kind of have some structure to our life. We know what we're going to do. We're doing the things that work for us. So I think a lot of what he talks about is really getting clear on what it is that you want for your life and how can I master myself? Because when I'm consistent and disciplined with making choices that are in alignment with where I want to go and who I want to be, I feel actually a lot more free because I'm not putting myself in positions of doing things I actually don't want to do. Because I can often think sometimes when we say yes to things um, that we don't really want to do, and then we go and do those things, we often have a lot of resentment. We often have a lot of that have to, which makes us feel like we're not free. And even which we notice in the Stephen Covey book, if we switch that to choose to as opposed to have to, that can be very, very freeing. Because when we are being disciplined, we are actually proactive as opposed to reactive. Like if you look around in your life, um, oops, um, if, if you look around in your life as opposed to with what you're doing, um, the things that we choose to do often bring us a lot of freedom. But whenever we get into the space of having to do things, we feel like we have no control. So it's really looking at those things and noticing where can I bring some of this self-discipline back into my life and how do I really realize that? And being controlling our thoughts. We have control over our thoughts and often we think that we don't. Hi, Mike. <laughs> I, I see you up here. We're on for Thursday. <laughs> ah. It's I thought it was, I'm so sorry to interrupt. So I thought no it was problem. Okay, and it popped up on my calendar now. Oh. Thought, no, it's Thursday, but it is Thursday. I wasn't going to make up my mind on my own saying, ignore <laughs> that Mike and then disappoint you. So, um, surprise. Hello. I'm sorry. No. To no problem. For everyone that's watching, this is Mike Picanti, and he is going to be our special inspiring human on Thursday, which he is also the author, author of Believership, which is a book that's really going to be in alignment with kind of what we're talking about today as well. So make sure you come back on Thursday to hear Mike, because he's awesome. 
<laughs> Excellent. I'm, I'm happy to pop in and see both of you. So that's yes. a joy in my day. I appreciate that. But please forgive me and, and um, I'll be excited and prepared for Thursday. Awesome. We will see you Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the awesomeness of being live. I love it. So great. So cool. <laughs> I am going away now. That is quite all right. So yeah, it's all about being disciplined, right? How can we bring more willpower into our life? And, and I was speaking to someone about this this morning too, about, you know, often we think self-discipline means doing things the way other people tell us to do them. So maybe it's about, you know, I'm disciplined with my workout routine. So I go to the gym every morning at six. But maybe that discipline actually comes from, I just go to the gym every day. So as long as I go to the gym at some point in the day, I'm happy with that. But often we want to follow these structures and these routines where we think that's what self-discipline looks like. But I think this is one of those things where it's really, really important to look at what does that mean for me and not compare it to anybody else. You know, maybe self-discipline for you with your eating means I have a slushy only once a week, not every day, but I'm going to allow myself to have that because that's what works for me. And that is my sense of discipline and willpower. You know, like it's, I think it's really, really important for some of these things to look at what works for you, because if we can compare ourselves to other people, this is where we get ourselves in trouble. And we can easily go into that space. So I'm not good enough. I never do what I say. I never keep the promises to myself because we're trying to go against what naturally works for us. You may have a lifestyle where you work nine to five and you have two or three small kids. So getting up early and going to the gym first thing really, really works for you. You may have a lifestyle where you don't have a lot of structure. You don't have to be somewhere. You don't have a lot of kids or any kids or they're grown. So you can go to the gym first thing in the morning before you go to bed, somewhere in the middle. But it's really about my real goal is I want to be disciplined with taking care of my body. And as long as I fit that in somewhere in my day, I'm okay with that. So really, I think for this one, it's one that can be really slippery if you're not really in tune with what works for you. Um, and if you spend too much time comparing it with what other people are doing. So I am more than I appear to be. All the world's strength and power rest inside me. I think this is a really good affirmation. Like if you start to forget how amazing you are and you spend too much time comparing yourself to other people is really coming back to that space of you are completely perfect the way you are. You have all the power you need within yourself to really create whatever it is that you want um, in your life. And then the next thing, you know, when the sumo wrestler picks up that stopwatch, this is all about time and really respecting your own time and knowing that this is your most precious commodity. This is something that we can't renew, right? When it's gone, it's gone. And so to really be clear about the things that matter in your life. I talk a lot sometimes about kind of having those four buckets or five buckets or areas of your life that really matter. So like I have my family, I have my work, I have my health, I have my personal growth. Those buckets are the most important buckets in my life. And I want to set my priorities around those buckets. That's where I want to spend my time. That's where I want to spend my energy. And if I'm doing things outside of those buckets too often, then I'm realizing that that's probably where I feel like I'm wasting time. That's probably where I'm losing some fulfillment that I could have in my life. Um, I have on my whiteboard, I had five buckets within my work that I was working on. And what I realized is five buckets in my work is too many. So now there's only three buckets and I've pulled off two buckets because too much time is going there 
where then I can't do the other things that are important to me, right? So it's really about simplifying my life, really being aware of where do I want to spend my time? Because the reality is life is very, very short. This is, this is it. This is all we got. Like I got today for all I know. Right now I only have this, which I'm super happy to be here. This is an awesome use of my time. I'm so happy to be here, you know, and it's looking at that space of if this was my last day, would I be happy with where I'm spending my time? Am I spending it doing the things that matter with the people that matter, with the work that matters for me? Or am I not? Am I, you know, too stuck up in, oh, my phone's ringing, I got to answer it all the time where I'm ignoring the important relationships in my life? Am I ignoring the relationship with myself by being so busy that I don't take time for meditation or reflection or being outside and doing the things that really put energy back into me, you know, and how can I really simplify the things I do where I'm really only focusing on the things that matter to give my life the balance that, that I want to help me move forward. And this is why I think I get so passionate about doing the impossible because what are those things on your list that you really, really want to do that thing that you've like one day, I'm going to do that one day might not come. You know, so how often have you been saying, someday I'm going to do that, someday I'm going to do that, one day I'll do that. It may not get here. So if there's things that you have that you really, really want to do, those, and that thing that you think, this is my impossible, this is the thing, you know, start taking action towards going towards that, to doing that thing, moving and making it happen because there is massive amounts of growth that comes through doing the things that we think are impossible. And often I think those are the little things that are, they're in the back of our mind. We know they're there. We know that they are. And often we don't have the courage to step into it, but knowing that what if tomorrow doesn't come? Would I regret not doing that thing or at least moving towards it? You know, and I think someone had, had asked on our podcast or our show here one day, you know, how do, um, how am I so fearless? Which I don't particularly think I'm fearless. However, I do often have in my mind a lot that life is short. This is all I've got. If this is something I really want to do. If I don't take the action now, I might not get the chance. And so I, and I think this is part of that, that mindset and, you know, my, tending to your garden where this is just my focus. This is where I'm going. This is what matters to me. And those other thoughts just don't run as often. And when I think about, I read this book literally over 20 years ago and I'm thinking, oh yeah, maybe that's a reason that I've really been kind of aware of some of these things and adopted some of these mindsets that keep me moving forward where it's just like, okay, it's up to me. I get to control all of this. This is what I want. My time is limited. Life is short. Like, okay, here we go. You know, um, and just, and making, making it happen. So don't accept a life of mediocrity when um, you hold such infinite potential within the fortress of your mind. Dare to tap into your greatness. And I feel like I could jump on a soapbox forever with this because I, oh my God, if you look at my website, everything, I really, really, really believe that every single human on the planet has so much greatness inside of them. And if we can just tap into that, anything you want is so totally, completely possible. And the other piece of that, I think, is recognizing that in other people. When you look at other people and realize that, you know, they are that magical human being that we know nothing about, but there's so much value and greatness inside of them and being curious and wanting to lift those people up and just find out what's in there, life is happier. So the next thing are those roses. So remember, he's all knocked out. He's unconscious. And all of a sudden, he wakes up and he's all energized because he smells these beautiful roses. So the yellow roses represent being um, selfishly serving others. And you may have heard the statement about, you know, the, the, um, a little bit of the fragrance of the flower always clings to the hand that gives it. So I think we can then relate this to when we are 
in contribution and when we're helping other people, that helps us too. It feels really good when we do good things for others. And it doesn't mean that you do this at the um, sacrifice of yourself and that you're not taking care of yourself. But I think when you do say one to five and you're really mindful of what's important to you and you're mindful of your thoughts and you're really working on mastering yourself and learning and growing it makes it easier to help others from that place of just being um, in service and contributing to others you know lifting them up helping other people reach their highest potentials and really cultivating um, your relationships we, we talk about this in in the work that we do it's all about our relationships with others the work that we do is designed to help people get what they want how do we help other people live the lives that we that they want? And as coaches, consultants, healers, wellness practitioners, that's what we do. We help people get what they want in their life. So really being available to, to just be of service to people. Um, and then the last thing, when he woke up, he smells the thing, he looks over, and he sees that path of diamonds. And really what that represents is to really be present recognize that life is full of amazing um, treasures. There's so many little diamonds that we have if we're just willing to look at it. Like if we just can slow down and recognize, you know, the beauty in our world to, to enjoy those, those tiny moments, you know, and be like, oh, how great is that? How great is it that Mike spontaneously appear today and you got to meet our guest who's going to be here on Thursday. How amazing is it that he wanted to make sure that he was in integrity to show up for us. This is a guy who's really busy, you know, and here he was not wanting to, to, to let us down. How fantastic is that? You know, like we can really choose to look at all the things that show up to us and look for those diamonds and those special moments, you know, really being able to savor every day that we have and be thankful and appreciative and, and tell people, you know, let people know how appreciative you are of them, you know, share, share the gratitude. And I think it's really too about when, when we're living in the present, it is about not sacrificing these little moments and these things that make us happy over the success in the achievement, right? It goes back to not answering the phone and being driven by keeping up with the Joneses and wanting to make sure I have the latest funnel systems and all of these things in place when really those things are creating more stress and I could really just simplify everything and focus on what's making me happy. My happiness comes from helping other people, being able to build those relationships, talk to people, help them get what they want. And as soon as I go to doing some of these things where I've got to make more money, I've got to be more successful, I've got to dress a certain way, I've got to talk a certain way, I've got to show up in a certain way, that is stressful, like so, so stressful. And it, we, I think we sacrifice our happiness a lot of times for what we think we should be doing, which is based on really the opinions of other people what other people think work for their life. So it comes down to being really, really clear about who are you? What do you want? What works for you? I kind of feel like we're a broken record with this U-shaped thing, but it's really, really true. And I think this book, just going back through it, reminded me of the importance of this self-responsibility, self-mastery, being really clear and okay with who I am and what works for my life. And just like you can have that, you know, for yourself as well. And I really, really love this, Obs, um, because everyone on this planet is a wonder of this world. Every one of us is a hero in some way or another. Every one of us has the potential for extraordinary achievement, happiness, and lasting fulfillment. All it takes are small steps in the direction of our dreams. I'm like, I love this book. I love this dude. It's so, so good. So this is kind of my overview of this book. Um, and I really, really do believe that we are all here for a reason. I don't think there's one single human on the planet that's a mistake. And I think we all have the ability to create the life that we want. Um, and that's really 
that's really what this book is about, is about helping you master yourself and start to um, build the future that, that you really, really, really want. <laughs> and that is the end of my story. The end. Isn't that crazy? Like, literally, I go for that book, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I say that. Like, like I look at my Decide Your Life and super... Um, yeah, the, the themes run through for a very long time. So. And right. everyone lives happily ever after. <laughs> yes, they do. That's right. <laughs> I love stories. <laughs> it's a very easy read because it is, it's a, it's a story of a, actually a, a lawyer who ends up having a heart attack and then he goes and finds these monks and learns mm -hmm. the lessons and comes back and shares them. That's kind of the the story part of it but you know and i also like i like the symbolism because it's easy to remember if i can remember those seven pictures oh, oh yeah am i doing that am i not doing that i don't know well that's one of the is that one of those um how to improve your memory seminars or whatever and they basically suggest doing that creating these pictures yeah in your head symbols to remember um, something on a list. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> it's, it's very cool. Like I say, I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily the concepts in these books are, are different or that anyone here probably hasn't heard them before, but I think they can be a really good reminder um, because I think we forget. I think sometimes the simple things we forget or we get used to doing things and we're like, oh yeah, I haven't really recognized that I'm still doing that or how can I implement a little bit more of that um, into, into my world. I think that's, that's actually one of the dangers. I know it is for me, is taking in information and I'm going, yeah, I heard that before. Yeah, this is really good. Um, yeah, this is, this is awesome. Or, you know, yeah, I heard this before, heard this before. Yeah, this is me going through, but yeah, yeah, heard it before, heard it before, read that before. Yeah. This is not new, right? <laughs> and it's, but the question really is like, do you know it, but are you living it? Exactly. Like, do you remember it on a daily basis? Exactly. Just, you know, so many of the things that you're, that you're saying, it's like, oh yeah, it's common sense. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. But you know, are we doing it? Exactly. And it's so funny, the thoughts that come in, because so when I was like, oh, I'm going to do this book, because it was really impactful. It was one of the first books. I'm like, everybody already knows this. But then I'm like, as I'm going through it, I'm like, but wait a second, where am I actually, I know it. And then where am I actually living it every day? Or how could I up my game in this spot every day? You know, am I really? Oh, I don't know. Do I really at the end of every day go through and check, you know, what was I thinking today? What did my day look like today? Did I live in alignment with my, am I doing that every single day? Hmm? No. You know, where, where is that space? Where can I be more, more disciplined in my life that would actually create more freedom for me? Like we talk about, you know, creativity loves constraints. Like where can I create these boxes that I might think are actually not, not freeing, but oh, when I live my life that way, I feel so much more like I have so much more time and freedom to do things. But yeah, it's am I implementing? Exactly. It's like you know the one that the point that really struck me today um, was the one about being present and living in the now. I like I'm having this experience of time going by really, 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 really fast. Um, April disappeared in a flash, you know, and I said, you know, I sometimes, you know, I sometimes joke around and it's like, you know, what happened to the nineties? Like, you know, <laughs> and then like, you know, I look and I'm like, it's the year 2020. It's like, where did the last 20 years go? That, that is really freaky. But I know when I spend more time being present to what's going on today in this moment in time, it does have that experience of slowing down. Totally. Um, but so easy for days and weeks to evaporate. And I'm like, wow, what happened? Where did it go, right? And I think because we're always looking at, and it's, it's we, we need our goals and we want to look where we're moving forward, but often we're so 
focused on the next thing, next thing, next thing, that we aren't really present with where we are and what's, what's happening right now. And I was thinking this morning, I was like, wow, I am so grateful for our show. I am so grateful that you guys show up every day because without this, you know, I wouldn't have had the opportunity. I wouldn't have gone back and reviewed the book. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, you know, looked back through it or any of those things to be able to go, oh, wow, this has actually really impacted my life. And I hadn't even thought about it. Like if you had said to me, oh, you must have got purpose from um, reading The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. I'm like, no, that totally came from Simon Sinek. But somewhere along the line, this purpose thing was probably planted 20 something years ago. And then I just found the method through Simon's thing. But really, I think this underlying thing that the seed was planted a long time ago. Like I never would have even made the connection at all. Like I would probably argue with you actually, because my cup would have been closed. <laughs> Because I know, you know? <laughs> and, and that's so true, too. It's, it, it's like, it's, um, like I'll say about marketing, it's getting the right message to the right people at the right time. Um, and I think that it's true of this kind of stuff, too. It's like, there's so much richness in what you shared today. Like, so many, so many possible <laughs> points, right? And it's just like, what is the right one? to hear for you right now in this moment in time, right? It's like, I picked up the thing about now. I've seen a couple of people have commented in the chat about the music thing. Mm. Um, here's a comment, um, music adds to the physicality ritual because dance party in the office. And it's like, okay, how, yeah. cool, like, how cool is that, right? That's so cool. You know, it, it, it stopped being a prisoner of your past. Um, this is, you know, this is what um, uh, stood out for somebody, right? The the idea of the nuggets of wisdom in a in a story um, allows it to sink in, right? It's um, it, it's just interesting how uh, how you could put that presentation in front of a hundred people, and if you yeah. pulled them afterwards, you know, for the most memorable thing that those comments are going to be all over the map. So true. So true. It's so cool. Yeah. You know, and it's funny with the, with the music one, because I was like, mm, I don't know about that one, you know, but then I'm like, oh, wait a second. If I stop and think about it, oh yeah. And then how often do I actually take the time to just listen to music for the sake of listening to music? Because maybe I'm just too busy, or maybe I only want to listen to, oh, I need to, oh, let me double, I'll listen to this podcast because I want to learn this thing, but where do I actually slow down and go, actually, maybe I just want to appreciate, you know, some music right, right now. It's really interesting. Really interesting how things show up. <laughs> That's for sure. But yeah, but thank you for letting me share that today because it was really fun. It was fun going um going back through it so good good learning for good learning for me <laughs> yeah. awesome i appreciate you i appreciate you uh bringing that uh to us today it's cool for me to to get to, to listen and learn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. music helps no me do dishes yeah <laughs> no doubt music actually helps me do housework which is good while i'm washing the baby buddha <laughs> Yeah, I tried that on the weekend. Totally didn't do it. Work. No, you're like, <laughs> I'm like, nope. Yeah, like, yeah, on that baby. <laughs> it's like, what is this all about? It's like, <laughs> maybe I didn't remember it right. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should think of of like washing the little kitty. I'm washing oh, yeah. a baby kitten or a little duck that's been soaked in oil. I need to get them all clean and fluffy again. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah, that's where I put my attention. Make him all clean. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works in the mind. That mind garden. Well, uh, hey, sure. it, you know, and it's like you do you, right? Like you figure out what works, and we figure out what works by by doing stuff that doesn't work. Exactly. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna hop out of that little segue to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> tomorrow we are we are doing this uh, uh, very fun uh, topic, uh, the bridges of Marketing County, to try to make it sound like it's fun. Uh, <laughs> but this is um, uh, I, I'm going to share um, some thoughts and some insight that Georgie and I have discovered over the last little while working with clients, and and really um, a breakthrough in my own thinking about marketing and how it's constructed and about this idea of building a bridge between what your clients are looking for and what it is that you offer. Um, it's super, super, um, I'd say critical for people who sell transformational services. And honestly, no matter what you sell, it's, it's helpful to have a bridge, but for people who sell transformational services like coaching and consulting and training, anything, um, uh, wellness services, anything where you help somebody become a better version of themselves, it is absolutely critical uh, to build that bridge. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow is like, what are those bridges? How do you construct them? Um, what are they? Uh, how do you start to implement them? So that's our topic for tomorrow. And uh, also public service announcement for our workshop coming up on the 29th, um, where we'll dive a little bit deeper into the that whole um, bridge idea and give some specifics about how to set that up in your business. Uh, so that is uh, that's our little announcement for uh, coming soon. And then of course we have Mike on Thursday who uh, I thought that was awesome timing. He just kind of drops in and it's, Perfect, like, right? it's like, Oh, there's Mike here to tell us about Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So cool, so cool. And I'm just gonna shout out to if we have, if I have a Facebook comment that I did not see. So you had me at discipline, <laughs> the time too. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Facebook commenters. <laughs> so excellent. So good. It's interesting that every day somehow your presentation makes me think that's awesome. Oh. Um, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate your feedback back. If you have ideas, Georgie's got lots of ideas on her list for things to talk about. I think she's got her next three, three Wednesdays. Uh, yeah. sorry about, I don't. So if you have something, uh, if you want some diagrams and boxes and arrows and stuff from me, <laughs> if you've got an idea, uh, happy to hear it. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, um, we'll be uh, we'll be back tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Have a terrific um, rest of your day. And uh, if you're watching us on the happy recording, you can find out more about us at 10kprogram.com. And hey, hit those subscribe buttons or follow buttons or whatever that you happen to see on the screen, because we really appreciate that too. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.